everybody, welcome to the Dreamer's Edge podcast. I'm Nicholas, I write video games reviews for thedreamersedge.com. And I'm Dimitri, webmaster of thedreamersedge.com and movie critic and television critic. Which is relevant because we're continuing our week-long discussion of the television grid with... Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, indeed. So let's start right away with something I like to call show and tell, and that's when we recommend, uh, well, stuff for you, this time television shows. I recommend the show Curb Your Enthusiasm, a uh, very funny show with Larry David. It's pretty, he's the creator of Seinfeld. The character George is based on him, and it's his life exaggerated, basically. Very bad thing happens to, happen to him, even though he doesn't mean it. And it's very funny. It's like really uncomfortable funny. Like you, you feel very bad for the guy when bad things happen, but it's, it's really funny. It, it doesn't have a lot of replay value, though, because when you know it's coming, you kind of feel very bad ahead of time, and you're like, okay, I can't watch this. <laughs> so the replay value is not great, but the first time you watch the episodes, they're really, really funny. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it as much as many people do, but I'm going to recommend a little horror show. Uh, it's Millennium. This is a show from the 90s, and I thought I'd recommend it now because uh, 2012 is looming, and Millennium was all about the end of the world coming our way. They thought it would happen in the Millennium, but... Uh, we all knew it would happen 12 years later because uh, we follow the main calendar or rather their production of it uh, yeah. as a guideline to our lives. Indeed. So Millennium is about this guy who is a, a consultant for the FBI. He specializes in hunting down uh, serial killers. And he discovers that uh, through it all, that all these serial killers and this madness is connected to the oncoming end of the world and demons trying to... Uh, ruin the earth and cause the apocalypse did my encounter had demons it's a chris carter show it was yeah. sort of a companion piece to x-files yeah a very good show i remember it frank black is the main character and he's played by lance henriksen who of course most people know now as that guy who keeps showing up in uh, original uh, sci-fi movies but he's always awesome i would say watch the first two seasons and consider the end of season two, the end of the series, because that's how it was intended. And then they got like this sort of last minute renewal and the writers went like, we don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and the season three was really limping into oblivion slowly. <laughs> wow, that's bad. Yeah. All right, let's talk Wednesday. On Wednesday, what can you expect from television uh, this fall and winter? Well, on ABC, uh, you get a slew of uh, sitcoms. I guess uh, ABC's Wednesday is CBS's Monday, I guess. I guess so, yeah. So we got The Middle, which is a show, a sitcom on its third season, sort of kind of like The Office with the full documentary style, but about the middle class. Everybody's doing that now in the full documentary thing. I guess The Office was great, so let's, let's do exactly the same thing. Well, it does allow narrative cheats because a lot of times you can derive comedy from characters acting a certain way but really thinking something else but it's hard to convey what they're really thinking yeah. but now they can just cut to the person telling you right in front of the camera i i did not even notice that show it's been on for three seasons you have well, two seasons already you tell me mm -hmm. I did not even know it exists so i can't really say much about it, it it's pretty, pretty probably very low key it seems to be moved up to eight though in order to uh, sandwich uh, a new show called suburgatory awesome title Oh, I thought you were going to describe the, the premise. I guess I'm going to do it. I forgot the premise already. Dad finds that his daughter has condoms, uh, uh, terrified that she's engaging in sexual activity. So moves his kids from New York, the city, <laughs> to suburbia uh, to start over and protect them from the nastiness of, uh, you know, growing up. What an uh, an idiot. <laughs> And that's the premise of the show. Uh, obviously, suburgatory, I imagine, is suburbia and purgatory put together. I yeah. Guess. Uh, very difficult title to pronounce. Yes, and a very hard concept to accept for me. It's just, that's not funny. That's not something that's, that's funny to me. It's, all right, you're, you're taking your kids that have their lives in the city and, oh, we're just going to move to suburbia because, you know, they have their lives. They don't have anything happening with them. I'm, I'm the father. I'm going to decide we're doing this. Well, he is a father. He should be able to decide what he does for his family. Yeah, but for, for good reasons. I mean, okay, I mean, that that's just ridiculous. The girl is going to have sex in suburbia as well, whether he likes it or not. Well, she's going to have... Well, that's the thing. That's the weird thing about it. Because in reality, she would have more sex in suburbia than the city. Because in the city, there's stuff to do. In Indeed. suburbia, there's nothing to do. So people hook up. Yeah, that's true. So the premise is completely wrong. I'm not going to watch that. Yeah, well, it when you read the press releases it's very hard to tell 
whether or not the show acknowledges that he's doing the wrong thing or not. And I think that would be a key information. Indeed, yes. By the title, I imagine that they know that he's doing the wrong thing. Yes. Well, he figured out he did the wrong thing, though, at one point, you know. Yeah. It's funny because the premise, without talking about the tone, reminds me of a drama from the WB back in the day called Everwood, where a father essentially does that after his wife dies. Yeah. And moves them all to, like, this very, very small town in Colorado. That premise also made me angry. <laughs> but that, that premise worked because he's a dysfunctional dad. He was a bad dad before his wife died, and he's equally awful after his wife died and like the fact that he moved them to colorado is not the worst thing he'll be doing to his kids as the series progresses. Okay. he is a bad father who with the best of intentions is hurting his children okay and that was part of the everwood premise and if they try to treat it the same way with uh, suburgatory it might work but i don't see how you can pay that off in the half hour sitcom format yeah I think that it's going to be harder yeah indeed so that's Suburgatory, Suburg oh my god, that's so hard to pronounce, Suburgatory, and uh, at 9 on ABC, we got Modern Family. Now, I know you feel very strongly on mo about Modern Family, which has reached its third season. Uh, it's not a show I really am fond of. My friend showed me an episode. All it was was like a bunch of, a big family fighting between each other. I did not find it funny at all. They tried to show me part of a second episode, and they started by fighting again with each other. I don't find families fighting constantly funny. I don't see how that's a sitcom. It's just an annoyance to me. It's it's it, it's not a funny show. It's a show I hate. But there's three families, though, isn't there? No, I didn't get to what the families were from the whole premise of it. That's a bunch of people that hang out together that keep yelling at each other. That's what I got from it. Okay. I, I didn't dislike it nearly as much. I caught a couple of episodes. Uh, nothing in it that hooks me. Nothing in it that makes me want to see. I want to see that again. But again, family sitcoms are sort. I'm sort of done with that. The uh, the 80s and 90s are so full of them that I'm sort of like I've seen my share for yeah. a lifetime or two. I'm not saying that the show should go full house, okay? Yeah. So those are feelings. But uh, Modern Family. I, I, I think we'll stay with your feelings on it, mostly because I'm so indifferent towards <laughs> it. It's, it exists. Yeah. <laughs> Modern Family. That's a show that exists. I guess. Uh, um, and is followed at 9.30 by Happy Endings. Yes, if I remember correctly, it's about a, a divorce uh, or the separation that happens during a wedding and the friends have to deal with that. Uh, very weird. Again, separation is always a funny topic. Uh, another premise that interests me, really, and I didn't see any commercials for it, so I don't know what to expect. Well, it sounds like second season and it's weird because mm -hmm. I never noticed it either. Uh, uh, well, there, there you go. Uh, then again, I don't watch ABC all that often. Uh, ABC doesn't have the sort of programming that's been attracting me ever since they lost. Lost, I guess. But um, yeah, whatever, man. It's divorces doing stuff. Uh, I thought that was called Cougar Town. Apparently, <laughs> oh. they weren't. They're not divorces in Cougar Town. They're no, they're just, not. They're just they're just cougars. Yeah, exactly. They're just older. They're actual cats. That go <laughs> they're just grown ups. <laughs> yeah. They're just grown ups going after sex, and apparently that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, because when I think cougar, I think Courtney Cox. <laughs> well, you know, she's not young anymore. She looks young. I mean, they could have cast her. Well, yeah. she's a very good looking woman. That's yeah. why she looks young. But... I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then at 10 on ABC, we got Revenge. Actually, looks interesting. Mm. Um, a woman that. Uh, something happened in her community when she was younger. Uh, something bad happens, I guess, to her family. She moves back in, and she plans to get revenge on everybody that did her, you know, harm. Uh, see, it looks very interesting. I don't know how long they can keep that premise going, because I don't know how many people she's going to need to take revenge at, but eventually you're going to go through the whole town and have nobody else left. Uh, but that, that looks interesting. I'm going to give it a try. Well, it depends also if the the because if they stretch out the revenges where it's not like one revenge per episode, the, let's say she has thirty people to get revenge on and she only does five per season, you got a lot of seasons going. That's true. If her revenge is very elaborate, and if her revenge is very elaborate, it's actually going to be more exciting because she might decide halfway goes like, oh, my perception of you was wrong. You're not that bad of a person, and then like try to undo her own very convoluted and complicated plans could be kind of funny. And yeah. Fun. That would be very interesting. I think it's a good premise. I, I yeah. think it's fun. It's not something we've seen before. And I like Emily Van Camp. I have to say, I like mm -hmm. her. She's a young Canadian actress. Uh, after Everwood, she sort of went into a lot of B-movies and horror films. And, but yeah. Nice to see her come back after Brothers and Sisters. I think she had a regular role in that. I think so. 
it's weird though. Like I th- guess the ten o'clock cutoff is like okay, we laugh beforehand, and now all of a sudden we have this revenge thing. It's really does not seem like comedy at all. <laughs> well, it's probably going to have a little bit of a dark comedy. Yeah, because it, it's such a kooky premise. I guess so. Um, but besides that, I mean, at ten, that's when you stop being family friendly, right? Cause I guess so. Yeah. If you're a family that cares about family friendliness, uh, your kids should be sleeping right now. <laughs> 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 you know? All right, then. CBS. Um, well, old reliables for CBS. Uh, at 8, we got Survivor on season 23. Yeah. Survivor would be funny if they actually were forced to survive and not being given all that stuff, you know. Um, and that, I don't like that show. It's it's okay if you have nothing else to watch and you just put it on. And even then, it gets annoying yeah, it's uh, my problem with it is that it's underhanded. I, I don't think we should take too much time on it because I know that uh, we'll be recording a episode on uh, reality TV. Uh, yeah. So we'll we'll be talking probably about that a lot more. Indeed. Because it is one of the first reality TV shows. So let's move on to nine o'clock on CBS. Uh, we got Criminal Minds, season seven. Yeah, I'm not not a fan of that one. It's a straight up cop show scene. They they don't do as much investigating with like gimmicks and stuff like that and i don't feel it's well it's well their gimmick is psychology yeah that's not a real science so i'm not interested i don't see how that's not a real science but because uh, it, it annoys psychologists when you say that okay. <laughs> um the thing that it's interesting about it is that they removed aj cook last season oh really uh and she, her character was the best what she was is something you've never seen in any other show she is the pr woman who handles liaison with uh the other agencies so you know, they're FBI guys who come up and go like, we're going to do this and do that and do that. And saying that to the local authority, of course, the local authority is going to be a little bit reluctant and feel a little bit threatened by that. Yeah. And her job is to smooth that out. And she does all the communications with that. It's such an original concept. And I sort of like that aspect of it because it is a show about the psychology of police work. So yeah. having a character whose job is to deal with the psychology of internal uh, yeah. police relations was a really great concept. And they removed her. They're not going to replace her at all. They're just going to have. They tried to replace her with uh, Rachel Nichols as this uh, ex-victim of uh, a serial killer who survived and joined okay. the team and all of that. Uh, essentially, the same role that she played in The Inside, a short-lived uh, TV show from Fox. Okay. It didn't work out, I guess. Uh, so they're bringing back AJ Cook this season, and I'm kind of psyched about that because I was like. Why did you remove her? I lost interest as soon as you did. She was the best character. Okay. Um, all right, so that's Criminal Minds. Uh, at 10, we got CSI Crime Scene Investigation Season 12. Interestingly, they finally moved it from its uh, very comfortable spot for 11 seasons, which was Thursdays at 9. Yeah. And now it's reached a 10 o'clock slot, which I, th- I think it has always been more appropriate on a Wednesday. CSI. Yeah. But on a Wednesday, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Since the, since the bug guy left, that show's been kind of boring. Uh, you mean Grisham? Grisham? Yeah, I really enjoyed Grisham and, you know, his interaction with his team. He left, uh, they, they did replace him, but no, it's not the same. I lost the interest even before, uh, when he started his romance with, uh... uh Sarah Seidel. Sarah Seidel. Yeah. I, I never bought into that storyline. I always thought that was a very odd coupling. And so I sort of gave up around that because, again, mm-hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a procedural. I'm sort of more interested in the procedural aspects of the relationship aspect yeah. to begin with. And uh, also, the science in CSI crime scene investigation is awful. They've gotten better. How have they, they? they? They're not as funny, you know. Mm. The, the, the stuff they keep using, you know, it's over and over. Like, this image has four pixel, enhance it. And, you know, oh, look, the killer is this guy. Yeah, that, that doesn't work that way. But they repeat the old stuff that people are used to. I need this DNA test. So I'll have it in 10 minutes, you know. It's mm. just like, okay, you know, it's funny. But, you know, you're repeating the old jokes, you know. So it's not as funny. Season 12, come on, it's time to end that. Indeed. All right, NBC. Uh, We start with Up All Night. Yeah, did not like the premise of that show either. What is that? Uh, Basically, it's a couple that they they just have a kid, and they have trouble sleeping. And that's all you get from the the commercials. But you learn later on that it's because they're trying to keep on their regular lives, going out with their friends and partying and stuff like that while still having a kid. And that's why they can't find time to sleep. That's ridiculous. Well, I think that's something new parents go through all the time. No, I've, from all the, the friends I've had that have had kids, uh, they knew when, when you know, the, the wife was pregnant, that, okay, party's over, we have to be, you know, a little more relaxed. So them wanting to keep on partying and everything while they still have a kid just kind of irks me a little bit. 
Well, if that's supposed to be where the uh, conflict is derived from and where the comedy goes from it. Again, with comedies, I, I don't believe that characters should do what's right because that's not funny. <laughs> yeah, but it's very weak. Their solution is very simple. Sleep. <laughs> well, no, because then they can't be up all night. I mean, but the main thing that, that, that completely killed me is you have commercials for that. And the mm -hmm. commercials aren't funny. If the commercials aren't funny, that's the number one synth for me for sitcoms. I will, I'm not going to watch a sitcom if the commercials aren't funny. Well, you keep saying that, but what's funny for one person is not necessarily funny for the other yeah, person. Yeah, I know, you know, but like I said, it, I, I'm not saying nobody should watch a sitcom. I'm saying yeah. I'm not going to watch it because the commercials aren't funny for me. Yeah, I haven't watched the, well, I haven't seen, I should say, I haven't seen the commercials for mm -hmm. it. Uh, but I got to tell you, just the premise is not that interesting to me. And that, here's why. Because the kids are going to grow up. And then what are you going to do? Well, they get to sleep at least when, I don't know, I don't get it. Because when it's still a baby, you know, as long as you don't shake the baby and, and you do feed the baby properly. Yeah. Well, that's not that bad that like, oh, I want to stay up all night and have a party and I'm leaving the, the baby with the nanny. Like, okay, fine. But when they grow up and the kids start having, you know, emotional issues and attachments and whatnot, and you're still going like, I want to go party. It's like, it's been four years and A, you still haven't figured out that you can't. And B, now your kid is actually taking it wrong. Like, yeah. it's going to be really uncomfortable and weird. And yeah. I don't see how that show has a future. It's the sort of premise that's like, that can last one season. It can last one season. Maybe, I mean, and how funny is it going to be? How long can the funniest last that, you know, they're, they're tired? I mean, two, three episodes. Well, no, but I mean, it's a more, I, I imagine it's a more general idea than that. Yeah, that you know. they have to mess around their lives because of the baby. Yeah. But, yeah. All right, let's move on to Free Agents at 8.30, still on NBC. I know that sitcoms are supposed to be situational comedies, so that Up All Night is a more traditional understanding of what a sitcom is. Yeah. But I tend to like the ones with more general context, like this one. It's about people of a certain age who uh, discover, you know, that, you know, they're not dead down there just yet yeah. and find themselves free again. You know, that you can derive a number of different contexts from it and a number of different yeah, jokes from it. Yeah, that can stay fresh for a very long time. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, the premise doesn't really scream at me. I have, haven't seen commercials for it uh, either, but... Not something that could be, you know, I can check out. I agree with you that it's not really the sort of thing that immediately piques my interest. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, it was for like How I Met Your Mother. I, I didn't start watching it from the, you know, first season because it didn't really pique my interest as well. I was like, okay, it's it's going to be about teenagers coupling and stuff like that. But, you know, eventually you learn, hey, it's actually pretty good. And you, you just catch up on your episodes and that's, you know, that's what summer's for. <laughs> well, I'm looking at a schedule. I might have time for it. <laughs> There's nothing going on on Wednesday that interests me in the slightest. Yeah. Uh, so actually, out of them, it might be the one that I might check out because it's a general enough premise that uh, whether or not it works, it'll be entirely on you know, the writer's work and the charm of the actors. And that I can't see from a media release. Yeah. You know? I can see that. Uh, it's followed by Harry's Law, the David A. Kelly show, uh, reaching its season two now. We had yeah. its first season as a mid-season replacement last year. Yeah. This is a Kathy Bates show lawyer show thing. I saw one episode. I was so confused. They, in the commercial, they show her as this tough lawyer mm -hmm. that, you know, doesn't take crap in everything. Mm -hmm. And the episode I saw, she was crying all the time. She was like whining and crying and, yeah, I don't want to do this. And this is real. And it's like, this is not what the commercial promised.
it. And it's very funny. It's like really uncomfortable funny. Like you, you feel very bad for the guy when bad things happen, but it's it's really funny. It, it doesn't have a lot of replay value though, because when you know it's coming, you kind of feel very bad ahead of time and you're like, okay, I can't watch this. <laughs> so the replay value, not great, but the first time you watch the episodes, they're really, really funny. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it as much as many people do, but I'm going to recommend a little horror show. Uh, it's Millennium. This is a show from the 90s and I thought I'd recommend it now because uh, 2012 is looming and Millennium was all about the end of the world coming our way. They thought it would happen in the Millennium, but... Uh, we all knew it would happen 12 years later because uh, we follow the main calendar or rather their production of it uh, yeah. as a guideline to our lives. Indeed. So Millennium is about this guy who... Is hey everybody, welcome to the Dreamer's Edge podcast. I'm Nicholas. I write video games reviews for dreamersedge.com. And I'm Dimitri, webmaster of the DreamersEdge.com and movie critic and television critic. Which is relevant because we're continuing our week-long discussion of the television grid with... Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, indeed. So let's start right away with something I like to call show and tell, and that's when we recommend, uh, well, stuff for you, this time television shows. I recommend the show Curb Your Enthusiasm, a uh, very funny show with Larry David. It's pretty, he's the creator of Seinfeld. The character George is based on him, and it's his life exaggerated. Basically, very bad thing happens that happen to him, even though he doesn't mean it. To oblivion slowly. <laughs> wow, that's bad. Yeah. All right, let's talk Wednesday. On Wednesday, what can you expect from television uh, this fall and winter? Well, on ABC, uh, you get a slew of uh, sitcoms. I guess uh, ABC's Wednesday is CBS's Monday, I guess. I guess so, yeah. So we got The Middle, which is a show, a sitcom on its third season, sort of kind of like The Office with the full documentary style, but about the middle class. Everybody's doing that now, the full documentary thing. I guess The Office was great, so let's, let's do exactly the same thing. Well, it does allow narrative cheats because a lot of times you can derive comedy from characters acting a certain way but really thinking something else but it's hard to convey what they're really thinking yeah. but now they can just cut to the person telling you right in front of the camera i i did not even notice that show it's been on for three seasons you involved two seasons already you tell me mm -hmm. did not even know it exists so i can't really say much about it, it it's pretty, pretty probably very low key it seems to be moved up to eight though in order to uh, sandwich uh, a new show called suburgatory awesome title Oh, I thought you were going to describe the, the premise. I guess I'm going to do it. I forgot the premise already. Dad finds that his daughter has condoms, uh, uh, terrified that she's engaging in sexual activity. So moves his kids from New York, the city, <laughs> to suburbia uh, to start over and protect them from the nastiness of, uh, you know, growing up. What an uh, an idiot. <laughs> And that's the premise of the show. Uh, obviously, <laughs> suburgatory, I imagine, is suburbia and purgatory put together. Yeah. I guess. Uh, very difficult. He is a, a consultant for the FBI. He specializes in hunting down uh, serial killers. And he discovers that uh, through it all, that all these serial killers and this madness is connected to the oncoming end of the world and demons trying to uh, ruin the earth and cause the apocalypse. Did my encounter had demons? It's a Chris Carter show. It was yeah. sort of a companion piece to X Files. Yeah, a very good show. I remember it. Frank Black is the main character, and he's played by Lance Henriksen, who, of course, most people know now as that guy who keeps showing up in uh, original uh, sci-fi movies. But he's always awesome. I would say watch the first two seasons and consider the end of season two the end of the series because that's how it was intended and then they got like this sort of last minute renewal and the writers went like we don't know what to do <laughs> <laughs> and the season three was really limping 